wanted to speak about leveraging Lotlac to build applications and how we run analytics on top of this. Uh, I'll be going into slightly a few engineering details of uh, that is behind the Lotlac server, how, how the architecture is and why we built it that way. I'll show you a few analytics behind uh, Kibana and how the Elasticsearch stack works for us. And I'll hand it down to Damani to go into Ask CUC and what we do with the data that we collect. So uh, introducing myself, I uh, am a core contributor with Michael to uh, the Lotlac server, and Damini here is a contributor, core contributor to the SUSI server. So it's a very good collaboration that we have. I will ask her to introduce herself. So uh, hi, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. So I've been working with uh, Fosesha, it's been a year, and Sushi when it was started, right from its inception, I was with it, and I'm so excited to talk about it. Okay, thank you, Damini. So let's just dive into the talk. So, what exactly is Lotlac? You've seen you've seen uh, the past two talks uh, speak about Lotlac and how they use Lotlac to do things. So, Lotlac is actually a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, a peer-to-peer -peer server architecture that we have, which collects tweets, indexes them, and it does all of this without going through the authentication layers that are that is put behind Twitter. So, in case you want to fetch tweets from Twitter, for example. What you would have to do is you would have to create a Twitter app, you have to create an OAuth login into Twitter, and then you're allowed to fetch the data that you want. And at the same time, Twitter has something called a rate limiting window, where you cannot query a, you cannot query for more than a specific number of tweets in every 15 minutes. So you, I think you're actually restricted down to 80 tweets for every 15 minutes. But if you run Lotlac for the first time, you will probably collect 25,000 tweets in the same 15 minutes. So that, that is the power. What it does is it has a scraper and it has a crawler. It goes onto the, uh, it, go, it goes, and it's also with Elasticsearch. So if I dive into the architecture, what happens? Is it clear by any chance? Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'll just explain how it works. You have the local host instance, the, the server instance that you're hosting. Uh, when once a client sends a request, so someone has to send a request to start the entire server or else the first query that the server makes is for beer because <laughs> we like beer <laughs> and <laughs> uh, it goes through a DDoS prevention check because it is an open API. Uh, you don't want people to spam the entire API by doing this. Uh, what it does after that is there is a REST interface and there is a peer-to-peer -peer interface. There is a crawler queue. So just like how every crawler works, you crawl a particular query. Say for example, I crawl at twitter.com slash uh, a specific page for a specific query. Now every other hashtag or every other mentions, that is the at that is there on Twitter, all of it gets injected into the queue and the queue takes over and then it keeps processing. So the bigger your queue size is, the more number of queries it can make at the same amount of time. And uh, so all of this, is written on a generic scraper factory, so we use factory patterns. What happens is, just the way we have Twitter scrapers, you can now plug in a Facebook scraper in case it's possible to do it, but we have tried to crawl Facebook and failed at it. Uh, you can similarly have Weibo scrapers. Weibo is the Chinese equivalent of Twitter that is there. We, we've been trying to do it with Instagram because they're also public posts. So you can use this crawler and scraper framework to do everything that you want to do on public websites to crawl and index all the information that you ever wanted. Uh, similarly, uh, the advantage of this compared to one machine actually querying is the peer-to-peer -peer interaction. So in case you have a set of 10 servers which are doing this, if one of the servers gets blocked by Twitter or the service provider, say for example, say Twitter or Weibo in this case, uh, what happens is that the server the Twitter service will reject all the requests from this particular server. In that case, what it can do is it can forward all of the tweet content that it has to another peer within itself so that it can increase the other peer's data capability. By default, we have configured it to push tweets to the loclac.org website, which is the website that we host uh, for the loclac project. So in case every, anybody runs tweets or uh, in, in, anybody runs the Lotlac server, it automatically collects the tweets, stores it on your system, and periodically keeps pushing the tweets to our, to our public server so that people can get access to it and people can use it. So it's a repository of open data that you have. And we have 1.45 plus billion tweets in the last two years. 
which is a very big number in case you're a data scientist, which is a very big number in case you're a researcher, because most NLP and most sentiment analysis and these kind of research that is carried out in universities go with something less than 100,000 tweets. So that is the data that they use to actually write their entire research. But we are giving researchers the capability to have 1.45 billion tweets publicly available for them so that they can do whatever they want with them. They can, they can push the computer science frontiers, especially with NLP and AI and data collection forward. And similarly, we use Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch uh, is the Elk stack, or Elasticsearch, Logstash, and the Kibana stack, uh, as it's popularly called, is completely scalable. So you can plug in multiple Elasticsearch indexes, and you can store data, you can balance the data that you load across multiple servers in case you actually do it on a production system. Uh, similarly, it's very easy to export data from one server to another. In case you don't want to maintain your server any longer, you can take a copy of it and hand it over to us in a hard disk, and we can just copy it onto our actual servers with absolutely no data loss because it will re-index itself. Similarly, it's very easy to partition all of your disks and only uh, dedicate a particular amount of disk for doing this for you. So say for example, you have a one terabyte disk and you want only 100 gigabytes of tweets. You don't want more than that. So you can dedicate 100 gigabytes so that you can store only 100 gigabytes of data. And also it has the public capability of looking for other local peers in the entire network. So over the internet, if there are other peers, and in case you make a query, you can also make a query to a peer to fetch data for you. Or you can also trigger a peer to perform a query for you. But that requires some amount of elevation rights. We give most of the elevation rights only to the local host or the server in which you maintain. Because you own the server, you can run something called a campaign on the entire server. That means you can tell the server that until I collect 10,000 tweets, don't stop crawling and crawl anything you feel like. Or you can make it crawl very focused content. You can make it crawl only Japanese tweets or only Chinese tweets and so on. That depends mostly on your starting query. Uh, so how exactly do we do analytics? Uh, we, we do this with Kibana. I'll actually just show you how, how easy it is. So, if you actually notice, this is the local server, which I just started. It's running at localhost 9000. And 9200 is the default port for Elasticsearch. And similarly, this window that you see here is the Kibana search, is, is Kibana. And it runs at port 5601. And you configure it to link it to port 9200. So now if I just open it up. So this is how Kibana looks like when you start it up. And these are all the tweets that it is still crawling and indexing. But there are some, things, some very interesting questions that I, that I or anybody as a data scientist would probably want to ask. So some of the questions are, hey, how many people on Twitter are happy? Okay. So it says that out of the collected out of the data that's collected on my machine, so I have more than four hundred thousand tweets on my machine. It says two hundred and sixty-seven thousand people who have posted are happy, which is roughly around fifty to fifty-one percent. Many of them are sad, so we can all we can try to understand why people are sad. Some of them are angry, or some of them are scared. They're they're feared. Uh, some of them are angry, and some of them. Uh, it classifies it more as a trust issue. So what, similarly, uh, what is the average length of a tweet that anybody ever makes? How many people actually make tweets of 140 characters? How many people use the entire limit that is given on Twitter? That is a huge spike. Similarly, what is the least number of, uh, like least number of characters that people actually use? It goes around 117. So, no one really uses more than 117, uses less than 117 characters. That's the minimum number of characters that people actually use on Twitter. And 140 characters is the limit that people want to touch at any cost of, at any cost. That's probably because we like to write a lot. And uh, similarly, you can also put them on a map. I don't think the map is loading, but yeah, I think you fairly get the idea that it is supposed to work. So you can put it up on a map. You can find out from which location people are tweeting the most. Uh, here it looks like this is Germany, France, something something nearby over there. I can't see the map, so I can't exactly tell. But similarly, it's very easy to also make queries. So in case you want to make a chart, you can create, you can 
choose which query you would want to make. Say for example, you want to plot uh, how many people swear, for, for example. So you see that there are a lot of people who talk about sex <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Similarly, there are a lot of people who swear, there are, there are lots of trolls, and there are also a lot of leet. So leet is hacker language. There's a lot of hacker language that goes around. So what, what we want to tell is Localize is an amazing data source for you as a, as a scientist, as a researcher, or as a data enthusiast, or as an open data fan, to, to you know, store data, understand what the data feels like, how, how, it, how, how it works. And it's built on such a, such a good architecture that it can, you can share data with somebody else who, when, when you don't want to maintain the data with you any longer. And uh, similarly, if I go ahead, there are a lot of APIs that are available from Localite. And how many of you have used Twitter apps before? How many of you made, made apps on Twitter? Okay. So you, you use an API to fetch all the data, right? And it goes to api.twitter.com. If you just replace api.twitter.com with api.localite.org and make very few modifications, you don't have to change any of your code and all the data works in the same fashion. Because added to the same format in which we provide data to you, say for example, here um, I want to find out um, tweets about President of the United States. Okay, uh, these are the tweets that he's made. The structure of each tweet object is exactly the same as that is given by Twitter, along with the keys. But added to that, you have much more things that are available with you, like, okay, I don't know why it's not here, but you have the text length, which Twitter doesn't provide. Similarly, you can also have classifier emotion, you can have the probability of the emotion, the probability of the language, and so on. So what this tells you is that the system is so scalable and the system is so, so uh, you, you can analyze every single line of text that you get. You can add a newer entry into this in case you want to find out <laughs> translations. You can probably add a key called translations and you can have an object telling this is the translation in Chinese, this is the translation in Japanese, this is the translation in French, all writing your own services. So. As, as a researcher or as someone who is very interested to look into something like this, this is a very amazing tool for you to actually play around with. And I'll actually hand it over to, um, to Damni to talk about what we did with the 1.45 billion tweets that we've collected. Uh, so thank you, Hirish. You covered a lot. Uh, so we were... Um, working on building apps using the APIs provided by Locla. So maybe I can share a small story of mine. So I wanted to build an application which will give um, the sentiment analysis on tweets. So I was, uh, before I was into Locla, I was using the Twitter APIs and uh, the procedure for getting your account authenticator was really huge. And thankfully they provide all the two support and I was, uh, pushing my up sample application over there, getting the client ID secret, replacing after every 15 or half an hour, and the tokens get expired. And yeah, they have rate limit. You get throttled after a certain time. Um, so later on, I moved to Loclack. And uh, one point is uh, Twitter doesn't give you an API which will give, uh, give you data on um, how, how the tweet is classified on emotions. One, that is one of the good uh, thing with Loclack. So internally, there is a classifier where you get uh, where your tweets are automatically whatever tweet gets in, they classify it under five or six emotions, and then you get the probability how the correct on the correctness of the uh, classification. And I was using the API and was able to classify, and that was one of the sample app. Or, or maybe you can uh, go to the apps page and look at the previously built apps using the local KPIs. many 
any analytic uh, related apps oops slowly and there are twitter walls timeline apps also oh, one of the main purpose of building apps is uh, we are trying to collect as many tweets as possible and providing these apis in the form of apps would help a lot maybe for a new user and you can actually check out this page now comes the interesting part uh ask susi susi um so michael has already covered a lot in his keynote uh, session about the internal architecture or now we may uh, we can actually pair, play around with the app so uh, why susi um we wanted to make the best use of the data collected by lokla and we came up with uh, an artificial intelligent chatbot called susi um one good thing we all love uh, playing around with cd cortana uh, but one uh, bad part about it is it's a small box it's, it's a closed ai you don't know what internal structure how they are trying to read your mind so you don't know all those but coming to susi uh, it's it's open you can train it according to your needs or for your any other purpose maybe if you uh, the other day i was talking to the singapore science center org, uh, organizer she was interested to uh build the train the susi according to uh their science facts and all so that whenever a kid enter enters the center they can play around with the susi uh so that was one interesting thing you can configure it according to your needs so that's the best part being open ai and susi dreams uh this is where you try to you know uh, configure your uh, ai chatbot so i will just uh, walk you through it Oops. just go on to this uh, link this is a temporary temporary uh, place where you can you know uh, give your own rules and teach uh, susi according to your needs uh, suppose i give uh, the room name Let's create a dream here now. Oops. Do you have to select? Yeah. Uh, okay. What can I? Uh, what tool you want to uh, have here? Maybe hi. Star. So. the star over here will read your input and remembers your name and give back so maybe you can say hello oh sorry i'm just using the caps uh so yeah oh it's it's there's a space already so this is the uh, oh sorry Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so one good thing is uh, we use locluck as the data source behind and you can configure the uh, data source over here along with locluck maybe you can have uh, encyclopedia as your uh, main data source or urban dictionary wikidata so it's it's completely configurable uh so coming to the future plans um regarding adding the data sources to uh sushi as of now we have locluck as a peer to peer system having uh, a lot of data being indexed and uh, so we want to build similar kind of scrapers for other social networking platforms be it weibo or facebook we want to even go to uh, instagram another uh, enhancements which we are planning is add more uh, capabilities to sushi maybe it should uh, have an account system so that it will remember your interest whenever you try to talk to it or give you suggestions on your um, uh, queries stuff like that and maybe you can explain more about the iot support so one of the future plans with sushi is to have iot devices speak on twitter so they'll they'll talk they'll post tweets to twitter and a local sushi server that is present at home will collect these tweets and it can trigger commands inside your home network to the devices that you probably want say for example you just post a tweet telling hi uh, what are my plants for example and you have a small robotic arm over there which pushes your uh, which pushes a small glass of water for example into the plant you can in, to for privacy reasons you can connect all of them to a publicly available uh, to to your uh, local server that you host at home and give that a public ip address and uh, or you may need you may not even need to give it a public ip address and when you post on twitter using the twitter app on your phone it will automatically fetch the data that you posted and trigger a query in your local network to do the required iot operation for you so this is the plan that we have uh, for this year and we should probably be able to demo something amazing for you the next year next with the complete time. iot integration of home automation or for farm automation or something like that so these are the three future plans that we have with the project open to take collaboration uh, we are open to take any questions in case you have it that's the last thing yes no so my question is you said local indexes tweets so does it actually just indexes or it also stores the tweet? so elastic so search tweet, what about the, the images and binaries to just store that in the okay so <coughs> that's a, that's a very good question um we store the tweets in the elastic search database but elastic search itself keeps indexing so you can trigger elastic search to index itself into multiple indices uh with respect to the images we don't store the binary content of the image yet but what we do is we have a public link of that image or the raw image link which we scrape and we store within ourselves so in case somebody wants to use the image they have to make one more explicit request using the image url that they get in the api and download the image for themselves so it's probably something we may want to change but images are very hard to index and that's probably the reason why we didn't go with indexing images okay, my own question yes um there was an emotion classifier earlier used what's the could you tell us a little more about the what tool being the oh, actually to doing this classification okay So uh that emotional classification is running a nice by by in classifier. Uh it's a regular off the chart or uh, off the shelf library that you can just pick for java. But that's just a proof of concept to show the modularity of locluck, to show how well it has been written and how how uh, amazing the library really is. So in case you want to run much better algorithms on top of it, you can just make one file. You can just write one other java class. and it will automatically integrate itself into the rest of the local like environment so that is how easy it is to really do it i can actually run you through the code in case that's needed um so let me just find file look for base so if you see inside the tools folder we have a base in classifier so if you just click on that so this is a publicly available base in classifier which we just took 
it's it's by it's written by Philip with an MIT license, and it automatically integrates itself into the local environment. Similarly, there are uh, there there have been some some of them who have written their own classifiers. They have tried to write their own classifiers, and you can also do more things with the data that you have.